Jesus, you're the only power, power. that can save this world today.
Are you guys excited to be in the house of God at a worship night on a Tuesday night? Yeah, it's a little different than what we typically have. We're typically, you know, in a room over there and, you know, we do our little circle thing and we feel like we're Maverick City, but we're not, but we try to be, right? Um, tonight we're in this room. It's different. It's a bigger room. It gives us a little more space, but I am going to ask if you feel comfortable enough that you would slide out of your seat and that you would make your way up to the front and worship with us congregationally. We would love for you to join us. Um, I'm just excited. Every worship night that we have, it gets me excited because God exceeds what we believe that he can do every single worship night. Every worship night, he exceeds it. He goes above and beyond because that's just the type of God that he is. He's not a God that's subpar. He's not a God that's just going to meet your expe expectation. He's a God that goes above and beyond it and says, you wanted this, but I gave you this and that, right? And so I'm reminded when I get into worship nights and when I get into moments like this, a, a story that comes to mind is in Joshua. And we see that um, they're, the Israelites, they're going to a place called Jericho. Y'all know Jericho? Come on, everybody say, everybody say Jericho on the count of three. One, two, three. And so there's this, this, this place, Jericho, and that God has told Joshua, hey, I'm giving you this city. I've given you this city. And what I want you guys to do is I want you to get to this place and I want you to walk around it. And six times, you're gonna walk around it. And I want you to say nothing. I want you to say nothing, just walk around it. Every day, you walk around it one day, the next day you walk around it, the next day you walk around it. On the seventh day, when you walk around it, I want you to lift up a shout. I want you to shout like your life depended on it. I want the instruments to go crazy. I want the voices to go crazy. And he says, on that seventh day, that's what I'm wanting for you to do. The city is yours. And I'm wondering how many people have walked in here and God has given you a city. It's not Jericho. It's not Webster. It's definitely not Pasadena, right? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And he's given you something, he's calling you. He said, I've, I've given this to you, but I want you to lift up a shout. I want you to lift up a shout of praise. And I'm believing that tonight our praise will precede the breakthrough in our life. That there's a breakthrough that is coming, but our shout and our praise needs to take place before we even see 
the breakthrough. And so when I look at the story in Joshua, what I see is they go around the city and they finally shout. And what takes place? The walls come crumbling down. The walls come crumbling down. And in our life, I believe that's exactly what God is wanting to do tonight. There are some walls that you've built that he's saying, I'm wanting to tear down. And what I love about walls being torn down is that it gives him an opportunity. It gives him room availability to build up what he wants to build, right? And tonight, that's exactly what I want, that this wouldn't be a worship night like any other worship night that we had. This would be a worship night where we come in here with our brokenness and he says, yeah, I can fix that. The brokenness that you brought, yeah, that's exactly what I want because it's in that brokenness that now I'm able to heal, that I'm able to restore, that I'm able to build up. And so I wonder if we have a group of people here that can just lift up a shout of praise before they see the breakthrough. They can lift up a shout of praise before they even hear God, before they even see God, before they even know God. Come on, for the next 30 seconds, don't stop. Our praise shall precede the breakthrough. Our praise will precede the breakthrough. God, you are able, you are willing, you are more than able. And so, Father, we pray that tonight that you will do a new thing in our life, God, that you will do what only you can do. It's in the name of Jesus, we pray. And we all said, amen. Give him a praise. Come on.
hearts open. Some of us facing a season where we're afraid. Where we've given more weight to the words that other people are saying. Where we're giving more weight to the situations that we find ourselves in. And so we started believing this lie that you're done with us. We started believing a lie that you can't still turn things around in the impossible situations. But Lord, tonight, we want to remind our souls that there's nothing that you can't do. Tonight we want to remind our hearts to wait on you. To wait for your word. To wait for your direction. To not be in a hurry to try to do things in our own strength, but to lean 
and your spirit. So God, tonight, we say take your time, Lord. That if we're not ready for it, don't give it to us, God, because that means that we're going to lose it. I just feel like there's people in the room who are holding on to a promise. That there's been something that's been spoken over you. And you're looking to your left and to your right and other people are getting the thing that you thought was meant for you. And so you're looking at God and you're saying, God, I, what's going on? Have you forgotten about me? God, can, can you still hear my cry? And the Lord says tonight, hey, I've never taken my eyes off of you. I've never turned my ears away from you. Sometimes faith isn't when you step out. Sometimes faith is when you stay still, waiting on a word from Him. So God, tonight I pray for that type of faith, Lord, in this room. The faith to wait when everything within us tries to get us to go. Tonight we wait on you, Jesus. Have your way. something bigger than me cause I've seen it in the hospital room when the doctor sits on me there's nothing more we can do well it wasn't there I've never seen a pot of gold in the middle of the rain but I've got a promise I can hold in the middle of the struggle God, if you said you perform, it may not be how I want you to. But here's what I'll do. I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait on you. I've tasted your goodness. I'm trusting you. What is next? Cause you hold the future And all the questions They come second To the one I know is true You've always been true Come on, you sing I'm gonna wait on you Wait on the Lord, cause He will win. 
new. Come on, you sing tonight. So wait, just wait on the Lord. Hey, wait on him. Just wait on him. Wait on him, cause he will. So just wait, I say. hear the Lord saying <laughs> when we're singing about waiting we're singing about W-A-I-T wait on you but I feel like like God's just I don't know if I don't know if it's my mind I don't know if it's my spirit I just feel like like God wants to talk about the other type of wait W-E-I-G-H-T wait and I feel it in my spirit like the Lord has been saying, you've been holding on to something that he, that's not meant for you. <laughs> that you've been, you've been walking around your life carrying a burden. Maybe it's the, the weight of other people's expectations. <laughs> Maybe it's the weight of your failures. Maybe it's the weight of fear. Maybe it, it's the weight of disappointment. And I just kind of feel it in my spirit and in my heart that when we're singing about, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait on you. We're also saying, God, I'm gonna give this weight to you. As human beings, we're not meant to carry the weight of the world. We're not meant to carry the weight of glory. That belongs to Jesus. That belongs to God. And the crazy thing is, He already died on a cross for the weight that you're carrying. So why are you still carrying it?
tonight's the night. I'm speaking to the person who can't sleep at night because they're worried about tomorrow over the things that they can't control. Tonight is the night you hand that over to Jesus. I'm talking, I'm talking to the person whose mom is lying sick in a hospital and you're worried because you don't know what to do. Tonight's the night that you hand that weight over to Jesus. I'm talking about the person who's struggling because they're like, I don't know if I'm supposed to get married. I can't find someone. Tonight's the night that you give that weight to Jesus. I'm talking about the person who's looking for their next meal. I want you to know, give that weight to Jesus because He he already died on a cross for it so you can be free. They that wait on the Lord shall renew, renew their strength. Come on. They shall, come on. Sing it like you mean it. And so, hey. They shall walk and not give in. They shall run and not faint. That's what happens when you got nothing new how could I express all my gratitude I could sing these songs as I often do but every song I've got one smile. 
Almost don't. I don't even want to leave that moment. It is. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on.
sing this song. I know it's it's not always easy to to worship. It's not always easy to lift up praises to our God. Although we we might walk in here and recognize that he is God and he is mighty and he is able and he is willing. We might walk in here with the the knowledge of that, but being able to speak up and still praise him when you're in the middle of a tough season is kind of difficult, huh? It's kind of difficult at times. Um, I'm not oblivious to the fact that everybody that walks in this room has their own life going on and has their own situation going on, their own circumstances going on. And you walk in here and you praise God and you worship God. And sometimes the words that you're singing are the words that are just being projected on the screen but are not a reflection of your heart. How do we get to a place where where the words that we're singing are actually a reflection of what we mean on the inside and what we feel on the inside, right? Is there anybody out there that has walked through a tough season and it's been difficult to, to maybe praise God or worship God or lift him up? You know he's real, like he's not judging you, right? You know he's real, but man, it's been difficult, it's tough. Then I come into a place where it looks like all these Christians got it together and I'm sitting here, how do I just get to that place? How do I get to that place? We're in the middle of this series called Obsession and it's all about the obsession that God has for his children. He's so obsessed with you. He loves you beyond measure. It's not a thing that can come in front of you. Nothing can separate us from the love that God has for us. He's obsessed with you. And as I wrestle with the, the obsession that God has for us, it makes me wrestle with what is my love towards him? Am I obsessed with him in the way that he's obsessed with me? Could I ever be obsessed with him in the way that he's obsessed with me? And I, and I felt challenged to, to dive into that and, and to try. I know that his love surpasses all, any other love, all understanding. It surpasses it all. But I'm going to try to love him just as much as he loves me. And, but what happens when my life is not that easy and it's, it's difficult? It's difficult. I've read this story many times. It's found in 2 Samuel, and this is a story that has impacted my life and will impact my life for, for the rest of my life. It's changed me. It's, it's challenged me because I see how a man can go through one of the toughest seasons of his life, yet he say, God, I'm still obsessed with you. God, I still love you. And we see that this is man by the name of David and might be familiar with David. And the Lord afflicted the child that Uriah's wife bore to David, and he became sick. David therefore sought God on behalf of the child, and David fasted and went in all and lay all night on the ground. And the elders of his house stood beside him to raise him from the ground, but he would not, nor did he eat food. And, and so what's taking place in this situation is that David has a child, and this child becomes really sick. And David is praying to God, God, save my child. Save my child. He's laying out on the ground. He's not eating. He's not talking to nobody. He's saying, God, save my child. I wonder, has anybody ever had one of those prayers? Save this in my life. God, I need you to work a miracle right now. I, I, don't, I won't eat. I won't sleep. I won't do nothing. I'll walk away from everything that's holding me away from you. But God, if you would just do this for me, God. One of those type of prayers. And that's where we find David. He's like, God, anything. If you could just do anything, help my child. On the seventh day, the child died. And the servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, behold, while the child was yet alive, we spoke to him and he did not listen to us. How then can we say to him, his child died? He may do himself harm. But when David saw that his servants were whispering together, David understood that his child was dead. And David said to his servant, is the child dead? And they said, he is dead. And this is the part that shook me. 
Because if you followed me for any amount of time, if you've been around for any amount of time, you understand that me and my wife, we went through some, uh, some life-changing, altering moments. Um, we were pregnant. We lost our child at four months of pregnancy, and it was devastating for us. We were devastated. But for those four months, we prayed and prayed and prayed and believed and believed and believed, and we saw ourselves just like David. We were on the ground praying, fasting, believing, getting all of our pastors, all of our friends coming together. Let's pray. Let's believe. And I'm giving everything that I have for God and still hoping that something happens, but when it doesn't happen, what is the next step? And so we lost our child at four months, and I find this scripture where David loses something that he's been praying for. He loses something that he's been praying for. And his next step, then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself, changed his clothes, and he went into the house of the Lord and he worshiped. And I read this scripture and I said, how does this man who's been praying to God nonstop, praying to God, believing in God, God, do this, please heal this, do that, do, and not eating and not spending time with nobody, only spending time with God, but God does not answer the prayer in the way that he wished he answered it. And then the child dies and what happens? He gets up and he worships God. What I felt God revealing to me is that this man had an obsession with me. He didn't love me for the acts that I can provide. He loved me because of who I was. And I wonder how many of us love God because of what he can do for us, not just because of who he is. I wonder how many of us could walk into a house of God when things haven't been right, when things haven't been answered in our life and say, you know what, I'm still going to worship you. I'm still going to worship you. I love what Pastor Derek was just singing when I have nothing else to give, this broken hallelujah. I have nothing else to give but my worship to you. And I believe tonight that that's all that God is requiring of us. He's not requiring us to come and bring this sacrifice or come to do this for an atonement. He's already paid for it all. All he's saying is, I want relationship with you. I want worship from you. I want communion with you. I want time with you. I, can I get that time with you? I love the scripture paints David as this man after God's heart. We see his life and how his life is broken. His life is falling apart at the seams most of the time. Whether it's something that he did to himself, somebody is overthrowing the kingdom and so now he's on the run, whatever it is, David's life is falling apart, yet we see that this man has a heart for God. He is obsessed with God. I'm challenged, young adults. I'm challenged to be a man that's after God's heart. I'm challenged to be a man that no matter what's taking place in my life, that my life reflects worship to the King. That no matter what takes place in my life, that I can say, I give you the, li the little that I have, my broken hallelujah, I give it to you because you deserve it. And so with all arms raised tonight, from the front to the back, God, we surrender ourselves to you. We surrender ourselves and we, just, we surrender every need that we have. We surrender every broken piece of ourselves that we have and believe, Father, that you are able to move, that you are able to heal, that you are able to restore, that you are able, God, you are able and you are willing. That is who you are. You're a God that sees us. You're a God that hears us. You're a God that desires to speak. You're a God that desires to listen. You're a God that desires to restore. That's who you are. And so we give to you our broken hallelujah. We give to you our broken worship. But we have nothing else to bring. But we have nothing to bring to the table. What we bring is our voice. What we bring is our love. What we bring is our sacrifice to you. A living sacrifice is who we are. And so God, we worship.
You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. says that you don't treat us as our sins deserve because you know that we're just dust and yet you have compassion on all your works and that you forgive all our sin you heal all our diseases you redeem our lives and you give us hope and a future you've been doing that since the very beginning God and you will continue to do it because that's who you are. You're unchanging, your nature never changes. Your faithfulness is unending. And we give you thanks.
servants came to see you. From the ground arose a king. And every day is born dark. You can do anything, you can do anything. My eyes will see your glory, my eyes will see your glory. You can do anything, you can do anything. My eyes will see your glory, my eyes will see your glory.
7. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? When evildoers come upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war arise against me, in spite of this, I shall be confident. One thing have I asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in His temple. For in the day of trouble, He will conceal me in His tabernacle. In the secret place of His tent, He will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock. And now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me. And I will offer in His tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Verse 13, I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And it ends with this, wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. I wanna go back to that verse six. It says, my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me. And it says, I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. And I don't know about you all, but how many of you have ever given a gift with a card attached to it to a loved one, a friend, a family member, or have received one? And you know that, you know, when you're picking out a card like that, you do your best to find kind of a representation of you know, what you want to express, what you want to say to that person that kind of expresses it as best as, you know, a store-bought card can. And you get it and you buy it, but then what do you do? You, you sign your name, but you write a little message at the end, right? And I don't know if you've ever received one. Every time I receive one, like from my wife or, you know, my mom, uh, I read the card, but what do your eyes do? You usually just kind of skim through. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's sweet. But then you go to the handwritten portion, right? And why is that? I think it's because that's, that's what the person really wants to say, right? They may, my grandma, when she does that, she like circles and underlines words in the card and like emphasizes yes. And you know, like exclamation points and whatever. But it's the, it's the spontaneous, it's the unplanned or unscripted expression of love or affection or just friendship that you want to know. Those are the words that mean the most. And I think worship a lot of times is like that. You know, we have these store-bought cards, if you will, these songs with the lyrics on the screen, right? And they, they do a good job of helping us express ourselves to the Lord. But, you know, if, if God is anything like me as a father, and I think, you know, we're kind of mirror images, I, I got to believe that maybe sometimes the part that means the most to him is that expression that comes without the store-bought card, that comes without the words on a screen. And so I wonder if tonight, you know, we read that psalm, I'll offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I wonder if we could just take a 30 seconds, if we could just take a minute and, and kind of sign the card tonight, if we could sign the card. You know, we've sung all these great songs. We've had all these great moments, but maybe, maybe you haven't really just opened up your heart. Maybe you haven't just given that expression, that spontaneous, the Lord says he inhabits the praises of his people. And one of the words for praise in the Hebrew is literally means the spontaneous expression of praise. So could we just lift up our voices without any kind of roadmap, without any kind of agenda or plan on the screen can you just open up your mouth tonight you may want to scream you may want to shout that's okay you may just want to give him a song of praise you may just want to say god i thank you oh god i thank you lord you're good
desiring an answered prayer, a miracle. I thought I'd walk on the stage with my miracle. I said, hey, baby. <laughs> hey. This is, this is mine and my wife's miracle, like our promise. And your promise may not look like the other person's promise, so stop looking at everybody else's promise because your promise is on its way and it's different. It's different. There was a, to be, what were you saying? Say, uh, let me wait for I can see it now, I can see it now. Come on. I wonder if anybody can see their miracle on the way. Come on, can you sing that out? Say, yeah, I can see you now. I can see you now. I can see it now. I can see it now. I can see it now. Hey, I can see it now. I can see it now. Let's go. I can see it now. I can see it now. Hey, I can see it now. I can see it now. Yeah, I can see it now. I can see it now. Hey, I can see it now. I can see it now. Tell it. I can see it now. I can see it now. Yeah, I can see it now. See it. I can see it. But what if it's even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Because he's the way maker. Sing it out. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness. Yeah. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who. state in the building we got david from elevation worship in the building tonight come on can you put your hands together and honor this man i want to thank you so much for joining us tonight man it, uh you truly made the night go up to that next level 
I've been saying it for a long time. We need, you know, an attractive skinny black dude up here, you know, uh, who loves Justin Bieber just as much as I do. And so thank you. Legit, can you put your hands together for this man being here, taking time out of his life to be here? Now, as good as that was, I have a feeling that it's going to get a little louder in this place. I, I, one more song. Can we do one more song? All right, look, if you've been sitting down, you've been in the back, whatever, the entire time, get over here, stop playing. Come on, you got 10 seconds, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. done for me this might take all day so i better start right now and it might get loud it might get loud see heaven's coming down 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 and it might get loud it might get loud heaven's coming down down
But man, it has been a good, good night. Let's take another second to honor these amazing people back here. We've got our band. We've got Sarah and David. We've got David, of course, from out of state. We are just so grateful that all of y'all came out to help us with worship night. And we are so honored to have you. While I was over there, I was meditating on a verse and I just thought I'd share it with you before you leave. It comes from Psalms 3. And it starts out like this, Psalms 3, 3. But you, O Lord, are my shield around me. You are my glory, the one who holds my head high. I cried out to the Lord and he answered me from his holy mountain. Didn't he do that tonight? I lay down and slept, yet I woke up in safety, for the Lord was watching over me, and I'm not afraid of 10,000 enemies who surround me on every single side. And I want you to know tonight that we came and we met him and he met us on his holy mountain. He listened and he heard and he met you. So you know what that means? That when you walk out of these doors tonight and you go to bed and you go to sleep, that you can sleep in safety and wake up knowing that the Lord is watching you and he has plans for you and he's got a purpose for your life, God.